Hi, this is lesson 2.2, chain rule. We're getting more advanced in our rules for derivatives, and the chain rule is one of them. Chain rule deals with the composition of functions. So a composition means that I have an inside function and an outside function, or one function inside another. So when I take the derivative here, what I do is I start with the outside function, which in this case is the f. And what I'm going to do is I go f prime. So the outside function, I'm going to take its derivative. What we do with the inside function, though, is that we leave it as it is. So it's just g of x. And then what we do is we do what we call the chain. And the chain is taking the derivative of that inside function, and we're going to multiply that on at the end. That is the chain rule. So take the outside function, take its derivative, leave the inside function alone, and then chain off the derivative of that inside function, which we call the chain. So the biggest problem for students is identifying what is the outside function, what's the inside function. So look at number one. And looking at number one, I have x squared minus 3. I hope you can see that that's kind of the inside function. The outside function is the squared. And so what I'm going to be doing is working with the squared first, leave the x squared minus 3 alone, and then multiply by the derivative of that inside. So y prime is equal to, like I said, I'm going to start with this outside function. That would be the power rule. So I'm going to bring the 2 out in front and leave the inside function alone, like so. And then I'm going to raise to the one less power. So that's just the power rule. Now what we still have to do, though, is the chain. And to do the chain, we have to take the derivative of the inside function, and we're going to multiply it on at the end. So the derivative of that inside function is simply 2x. Then we can go ahead and simplify our answer. So y prime is equal to 4x times x squared minus 3. There's the chain rule. So I put these two together. So in this example, the 2x right here is the chain. Number 2, when we look at this one, we have sine would be the outside function. The inside function was 3x. So when I take the derivative, y prime, I'm going to take the derivative of the sine of x first. So I'm going to take that, leave the inside alone, and now I have to go ahead and chain off that inside, which just would be a 3. This is the chain. So then to simplify, I get y prime is equal to 3 cosine of 3x. And I put the rule down here, so you would reference it on your sheet from up above, but I don't do that from here. So here I had the outside function is the sine of x from there, and then the inside function is going to be the 3x. And then we do f prime, which is the cosine, g of x, leave it alone, and then I have the g prime, which is the 3. There it is. So looking at this number 3 now, how are we going to deal with this? Well, the outside function is a little bit funny, but I can rewrite this whole thing as 3x squared minus x raised to the 3 halves. Remember that the 3 is in the numerator, and then from the radical here, I get the 2 in the denominator. And so if I go ahead now and take this derivative, so f prime of x is equal to, I do the power rule, the 3 halves comes out in front, leave the inside alone, and raise it to the 1 less power. 1 less than 3 halves is 1 half. Now I have to go ahead and do the chain. Now there is a different way to do this. If you want to break this out in steps, you can go ahead, 3x squared minus x, and call it prime. This adds an additional step to you, but some of you need this to see what's going on. But then if you do take the derivative of 3x squared minus x, you do get 6x minus 1. Now I should put that together with this 3 halves and simplify it. And multiplying 3 halves times 6x minus 1 does give me 9x minus 3 halves. So that would be my answer with the chain
ends up turn, turns out to be at the beginning, but that's okay. Number four, we have convenience notation. Having this squared right here is a convenience notation, but what this really means is cosine of x quantity squared. And so when I look at that, that makes it obvious what the inside and the outside functions are. Here, maybe not so obvious. Once you get good at it, maybe you can ignore rewriting it, but I always think it is good to rewrite. So we have y prime is equal to outside function is the exponent. So I'm gonna do the power rule, raise it to the one less power, and then I need to go ahead and take the chain of this inside, derivative of the cosine is negative sine of x. Simplify this up a little bit, and we can get two, and there's a negative, uh, cosine of x times the sine of x. Now, you could use some of your trig rules to go ahead and simplify this, which turns out to be the double angle formula for the sine. So I still have the negative, and it'd be sine of 2x. Now, number five. This one doesn't really look like a composition of functions, but you can treat it like a composition of functions. So what happens with this one is that you need to rewrite this one. Inside function, 2x plus 1. What is the outside function? Well, I need the negative 1 as the exponent. That is still g of x. I haven't taken a derivative yet. Now, if I go ahead and take the derivative, g prime of x, outside function, and I'm going to be using the power rule, so negative 1, 2x plus 1, raise it to the 1 less power, so that would be a negative 2. Now I still have to do the chain. The derivative of the inside function is simply 2. Now I need to clean this up. So then g prime of x is equal to, looks like I have a negative 2 on top, and then I have my 2x plus 1 in the denominator, and that would be squared. That's me writing it with no negative exponents. So that's that there. Number 6, what do we have here? Uh-oh. I see, oh, what do you see? I see three functions. I see the cube as an outside function, a sine of 4t squared as an inside function. So 4t squared is another inside function. So we have a composition involving three functions. Three functions means that I'm going to get two chains. Sometimes students want to keep on going, but it's only two chains. And I do have this written down here, this rule down here. That's a bunch of garbage. You really shouldn't have to memorize that, but that is the rule for a composition involving three functions and its derivative. I think I did that right. So let's start off with the rewrite. The rewrite is taking the sine of 4t squared, not x, 4t squared, and cubing that whole thing. And so I start off with going f prime of t is equal to, so I do the power rule with the 3. Bring it out in front, sine of 4t squared. Now the next step is to go to the next inside function, which is an outside of the inside, which would just be the sine. So I'm going to now take the derivative of the sine and do the chain with that. So now I'm going to go cosine Derivative of the sine is the cosine. Leave the 4t squared alone. And then how many chains did I say I have? This is number one. I need one more. And so then the last chain is going to be the derivative of the 4t squared, which would just be 8t. And that's what we have. And so now you can go ahead and simplify this. That's chain number two there. So I just take the 8t and multiply it by the 3. I get my 24t. Sine of 4t squared, cosine of 4t squared. There's probably a double angle formula somewhere in there, but I'm not going to worry about that. And that would be what our derivative is. 
Or did I make a mistake? Did anybody see my mistake? Yes, there is a mistake in there. I forgot to raise to the one less power right here. So you should have a squared on this one right here. So there is no double angle formula like I was saying, but you do have to have this squared right there. If you caught that, great. If you didn't, try to stay maybe a step ahead of me, test yourself, you learn more that way. Okay, now for number seven, we're gonna really get into it because we have many things going on. Look at this first and see if you can make a judgment what's going on and what you can do with it. And then if you have to pause, go ahead and pause and then I'll go through it here. So first of all, I have what I see is a product. So I'm looking at a product rule. And so within that product rule, you also will have to do a chain on the second piece, which is this piece right here. So what I like to do is I like to go off to the side and say, okay, I'm taking the derivative of one minus x squared raised to the one half. And if I do this off to the side, then when I'm doing the product rule, I don't have to think as much. I kind of like to do it this way. You choose how you want to do that, but this is going to be one half. Outside function one half, leave the inside alone, raise it to the one less power, and then multiply it by the chain, which would be negative 2x. Notice that my 2's cancel here. So I'm left with, what am I left with? I have an x in the numerator, and on the bottom, I'm going to be 1 minus x squared. This negative exponent moves everything down below, so I get that right there. This is the derivative of this piece up here. So now when I do the product rule, I'll make everything a lot make it a lot easier. So if we take this y prime, y prime is equal to the first times the derivative of the second. I already did that over here on the side. Ooh, that makes that easy. x over 1 minus x squared square root. So that's first times the derivative of the second. Then you do plus the second which is the square root of 1 minus x squared times the derivative of the first, which would be my 2x. So there's my derivative. I need to clean it up, though, but that is my derivative. Once again, I did make another little mistake. That should be a negative there, so I have a negative there. So you just got to be careful with your organization. Even Problems even happen with pros like me. So here we go. We go negative x cubed and then that would be times I can put this in the numerator or the denominator if we want to simplify it by factoring we probably should put it in the numerator like that so then this would be 2x and then this would be 1 minus x squared to the 1 half so this is a pretty good answer but it does say simplifying by simplify by factoring what you can do is get this and pull this out as a common factor. And so if I do that, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, what am I left with? Well, I'm left with the negative x cubed plus, and then now here what happens is that 1 minus x squared raised to the negative 1 half times what will give me 1 minus x squared raised to the half. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is 2x, 1 minus x squared, raised to the first. So if I take to the negative 1 half, and I take to the first power, multiply those two together, I raise it to the 1 half, which gets me back up to here. Now, why is that easier? Well, if I put this now in the denominator, 1 minus x squared, to the 1 half and simplify this right here. I'm going to expand that and put some things together. You're going to get negative 3x to the third plus 2x. I'm going to leave some of that simplifying to you, but you should be able to do that. So now for number 8, what they do is they give me a bunch of values, and then they say take the derivative of p of q of x. So when I, when I see this right here, I'm saying, oh, 
they want me to know the notation for the derivative of a composition of functions, which in other words, I need to be able to apply myself in the chain rule and then use all of these values to plug in at appropriate time to figure out what happens at x equal to two. So let's go ahead and take this derivative here. So if I do that, that would be take the derivative of the outside function, leave the inside alone. Chain off that derivative of that inside function. Now they want me to evaluate at two, because they told me two. And so if I have these values, that's a Q, sorry, Q of two. If I have these values, I should be good to go. So Q of two, if I look right here, this would be a three. So this would be P prime of three. Now they're gonna to have to give me that value in order to make this work. And then I need Q prime of two, which is two. And did they give me P prime of three? Yes. It didn't matter what P prime of two was. I needed P prime of three, which is the four. So I'm gonna get four times two, which is eight. Know the rule, plug in the pieces you have, and you should be able to evaluate what you got. So that's the chain rule. And I'm using my finger today. I lost my, or I don't have my pen. So hopefully that turned out all right for you. And then the last thing I want to do here though is that go back up to the beginning. I did not do this piece right here. The F of U notation. And when I do that, the chain rule says that this is the outside function. This is the inside function. U is a function of X. So this would be F prime, leave the U alone, and then chain off the U. That would be another way to represent the chain rule. All right, I hope that this worked out okay for you. And 2.2 chain rule, Taylor and Shaw, have a great day.